test, test. There we go. Now we're working. Hope. Oh. Hello. 50 Cent has joined. What's up, 50 Cent? Hello. Wow. 50 Cent. Lots of people. All right. So today, let me go ahead and pull up the chat on here. Oh, computer. We are going to be, I'm going to answer some questions, and then also um, do some bottling, because right now I have I have all of this stuff I want to bottle, um, and this is the blueberry mead, so I haven't done a video on it in a while for a reason, and you'll see pretty soon why I haven't done a video. Um, my goal is to take and uh, put it all in the bottles and get going. Now, I've separated it out into three different uh, containers for a reason. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave one as it is, which is uh, has blueberry and vanilla in it, and then uh, just leave it dry, so to speak. So this is my dry one. I'm not going to put any more honey in it. I'm going to back sweeten these other two. So I'm going to back sweeten. I already did a ratio test earlier, and so I basically just took a uh, one of these bottles, filled it up, and then put it into a cup, and started adding honey uh, slowly to figure out where I wanted to start with my honey each point. So now uh, I'm gonna, I've decided and landed on putting three quarters of a cup of honey into, uh, into this. So it will really be one and a half because this is two gallons. So one and a half uh, pounds of honey, not pounds, goodness, cups of honey, and then uh, into this main one. And that's gonna be my uh, semi-sweet and then this one is going to be my, my sweet one, and I'm going to put uh, just one whole cup into here and see from there and get going. I just started my first mead. How long until I start seeing bubbles from my airlock? It depends on how quick your yeast turn around and want to start. Did you figure out what made your strawberry melomel develop mold? Um, I think so. I think it was just what I said in the video, which was uh, basically that I had too much air and um, probably some bad bacteria. Question, how long should primary and secondary fermentation last? Primary is a very short duration. It's about two weeks uh, to, to four weeks, and then secondary um, can last as however long the sugars keep going. So there's no determined uh, amount. It's kind of depending on the yeast. All right, I'm gonna start by getting my honey. And so what I've done with my honey is I've taken and put it into a, uh, a big old bucket of basically hot water. So it's nice and warm and it will mix into the mead well. I will start with my semi-sweet by sweetening it. Um, Brian, oh, four hours is like nothing, man. You got to wait at least like 24 to see something. So um, I don't think, don't be worried. Four hours is not a lot at all. Okay, here's my two, or excuse me, four gallons. And so I'll, I have my camera way over there because I got to get the whole shot. That's all four gallons going along. And uh, basically, like I said, now we're going to put one and a half cups in here, 0.75 cups of honey per gallon for this one. This is the sweet, um, or, this is the semi-sweet, excuse me. So we're going to fill this up. And the honey is nice and warm, which makes it way easier. Um, hopefully it's just a quick mix in. It doesn't, uh, doesn't take a lot of work. It took a little bit more work when I was doing my testing because I didn't heat up the honey very well. We'll see though. Checking the pH and gravity definitely helps. Um, I would not worry about it that early though, because realistically your yeast are just now waking up. So you're probably not going to see a lot of activity until the 24 to 48 hour mark. At that point, you should be fine. And I'm using a different honey than I used initially. This I put a Desert Creek honey into this mead and I'm using, this is Nature Nate's. I've used it before. It's from Sam's. It's pretty good. Um, but this is just for back sweetening purposes. So now we're going to add honey in. This is one cup 
and we need to do a half cup. So I gotta get my other one. We can go from here. I wanna know, is anybody uh, currently about the bottle of meat as well? I'd be curious to hear about that. All right, here's our other half. Mitchell, um, so for a sweet mead, how much honey should you put in? To answer your question, it's just depending on your own taste. So sweet is really subjective, just like every other flavor, and I hate, it sounds like a cop-out answer, but it's really not. Um, sweet to me is gonna be different to you, and so you really have to just add honey, do what I did. I added like a quarter, uh, basically I did a, t a tablespoon of honey um, into this beer bottle. And when I did that, I, I got to that point where I was like, okay, this is where I want my medium sweet to be, my semi-sweet. And so I did some math and figured out how many tablespoons um, of honey I would ultimately need to, to get to that point where I want to be of semi-sweet for two gallons. Um, and then I did the same thing. I added a little more and I got to my sweet point. Now, I got that going. I got to stir it some more. So as we stir, we're gonna um, we're gonna make sure that there's no no extra um, like heavy fermentation. This has been sitting for a while, and there is the the concern that maybe there will be some some extra fermentation that occurs, um, just because ultimately, you know, yeast might not be dead. It might just be resting, and that's all right. Um, if there's a little extra fermentation, then we will just deal with it as it is. But what I'm doing is keeping from um, too vigorously stirring to not put a lot of oxygen in here as well. Okay, we are ready to go ahead and bottle the semi-sweet. So um, bottling is pretty simple. You have, if you've never done it before, you have your auto siphon. Your auto siphon is connected. Um, this is a bottling wand. It's got a little plastic tip on the end. And this little plastic tip, what it does is it just pushes down. It lets the liquid go into the bottle. And you can control how much um, you want to put into the bottle. So I'm going to move some of these over. These are all... Um, I made sure and sanitize them and then rinse them. And so they've been... They are ready to be filled. I'm also going to do a um, I'm going to do a full wine bottle of this one, and then a little 375. Which the 375s and the beer bottles are about the same. They're virtually the same thing, um, but one, in my opinion, the clear looks nicer. All right. Jeff, Jeff Heath, I am bottling um, a my blueberry and vanilla mead. So I, uh, it's been aging for I think since June. So we're at four months. It's a quick bottle for this one, but I'm okay with. Um, I actually want this to kind of bottle carbonate. So doing some back sweetening is hopefully going to enable that. But we will see. This is the trickiest part of getting it going. You kind of have to. You have to hold one and move the other, and it's not always the most user-friendly thing. There we go. Now, get to our lower point, and we can start filling. Mitchell Hendricks. You're on the sweet side, yeah. So that's the thing is you want to you wanna temper your meads to what you ultimately want, or you and your girlfriend ultimately want, because... Uh, taste is all subjective, and while that's uh, nice, it can also be frustrating because you know we want to have the recipes to know how much to put what and when and how, and to go from there. So I think I don't know if I saw anybody say anything, but is anybody bottling any meads soon, or are they? Is everyone kind of on the same? stage of, of getting ready for stuff. 
I'm guessing everybody here loves their various honeys. Or just mead. Yes. I think everyone here probably loves mead at this point, which is, which is good. I need to change my setup a little bit so I can actually see the questions as they're going along. Now I can actually see stuff. Just moved a four gallon batch into single gallon carboys on the fruit this weekend, but not quite to the bottling stage. What kind of fruit are you using? Uh, Chiron 997. I probably said your name wrong. Sorry. Wanting to try Tasmanian Leatherwood honey. That sounds totally insane, but super awesome at the same time. If you get a hold of some, let me know, and I'll uh, send it my way, and I'll give you some money or something, because that sounds really cool. And I have no idea where I would get that if I wanted to make it, or wanted to use it, for that matter. I have a base mead going, 8%. Going to hit it with some ginger and spices. Let's see. Uh... And carbit, anybody recommend any spices to mix with it? Cardamom, but... You know, I haven't done... I can't say I've done many spice meads, so that's one thing I want to do more of. Um, I did the pumpkin spice mead, but that's about as close to, to spice as I've made. Um, and that one turned out pretty good. I have learned pretty quickly, one little lesson is that I prefer sweeter meads, and I haven't back sweetened a lot of my previously bottled meads, which is, uh, which isn't a big deal. But it also means that ultimately I'm, I haven't like made them the complete way I want to, which is all right. I'm gonna run out of space here, pretty quick. Just ginger and cardamom. Should spices be put in the primary or secondary uh, with the fruit, or should it be put in oh, primary? Um, you can do both. Most people do uh, their spices in the secondary, from what I've heard about. So I would try that before trying uh, primary. But you could try both. Ultimately. Um, you could get a good result with putting it in the primary. You never know. I've had some experience with cinnamon, but a little goes a long way. Cinnamon does go a very long way. I would be very careful about just chunking cinnamon sticks in. I've learned quickly that they, uh, they tend to um, take over and overpower whatever you put them in rather quickly. And this, this one's not the most clear mead, which that's all right. I'm not... I'm not too worried about um, clear clarity. Some people see it as like an end-all, be-all. If your meat isn't clear, then you can start to, um, you know, make a bad meat or whatever. But I'd rather focus on the taste side of things. Plus, um, if anybody's ever had an experience with clearing up a mead, it does take a lot longer to do it if you do it without any extra additives, but also if you want to do it the professional way, you can, you have to um, press it through a really uh, strong, excuse me, small strainer of sorts. And so those things are real expensive and that, uh, <laughs> that can be crazy. Those get down to what's called uh, on the molecular level of one micron and one micron is enough to actually um, can take some color out of things if you're not careful. It doesn't exactly get rid of all the yeast. Uh, it can, most of the time it does, but sometimes some yeast can make their way through, and that's where people run into issues. Let's see. I'm trying some apricot, saffron, and rose water at some point. I'm trying to make a Turkish delight mead. Yeah, there you go. That's, that's a throwback to a movie. Um, that would be interesting. I would say go for it. Grab a few more bottles. I'm 
wonder how many more I'm going to get out of this thing. I guess we'll find out. Oh, man. I'm about to knock over my stuff. Let's get it all out of the way. I'll be real disappointed if I knock, out, knock over my bottles. Mix up some spices. And this one, um, I'm, I'm good. I got, I got some uh, vanilla in there. And I think that's enough spice for me. Enough additive to it. If you want to check out any of my stuff, if you guys have noticed, I'm wearing um, my own merchandise, of course, which I bought some because... You know, you can. And so this is one of multiple different shirts and different uh, things you can buy in my store. If you look down in the description, you'll see that there's a store called Society6. And that is where you can buy my stuff. And that helps support me and give me um, the ability to make more mead and buy more honey and make more content. And hopefully, um, I've upgraded my little audio setup a little bit with this lavalier mic. It's not the nicest one in the world. It does do the job for now. However, um, I would love to continue to make a better stream setup for you guys. How do you prep your bottles before bottling? Uh, ultimately, I prep them. So what I did was I, I took and uh, cleared, uh, I ran some sanitizing water through all of them. And then when I did that, uh, after I did that, I basically took them and then rinsed them from there. So this is all with hot water, and that hot water helps me, I mean, kills, kills bacteria and, and gets rid of any chance of anything that's not supposed to be living in there uh, getting out. So it's really a short process. The, the sanitizing stuff I used is, um, is a one-step sanitizer, so I really didn't have to actually uh, um, san or rinse it. Instead, I could have just left it, but I didn't if that makes any sense. Ultimately, you're just cleansing the bottles in whatever way you can just to keep any bacteria from being in there, especially if they've been stored for a long time. Sometimes you'll get, um, you know, you'll get dust or anything else. Mitchell Hendricks for a sweet mead, would it be better to use WLP 720 White Labs sweet yeast, or can you just use any yeast? Uh, sweet meads don't depend on the yeast, it's actually the amount of honey or the amount of sugar that ultimately ends up in the honey. So you can use whatever yeast you want. You want to try and use a yeast that's going to pair well with whatever other ingredients you're putting in there. Um, that's probably priority number one because you can always back sweeten a mead to get it to where you want it to be. Um, but uh, I imagine that the people at White Labs have done a good job of actually uh, making that yeast to where it's good for making sweet meads and doing that. I think that ultimately you don't have to have that yeast, though, to make a sweet meat, if that makes sense. We are down to the bottom of the semi-sweet. So now i got to do a little weird holding with one hand. and I've got to move some stuff over. I don't want to, I don't want to spill anything. Okay. And there is not a lot of, uh, of sediment in here, which is nice. Just a little bit at the bottom. But, you know, I think if you're a home brewer and if people know you're a home brewer, they can't be that mad about a little sediment. I'm not a commercial style yet in life. I'd love to, to make commercial meads, but you uh, you got to jump some hoops to get there first. And I think some hoops being um, how much sediment is at the bottom of your barrel. Uh, why not? Dare say there is some that don't go well together. What do you mean, Seeker? Are you talking about yeasts? Are you talking about what do you what do you mean in general? I'm trying to figure out. Oh, I need four hands now. Getting getting stuck. Oh no. Okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry, James. I missed you. I'm 
trying to do too many things at once. This is not happening. Come on. This is where being like a big time mead maker would be um, it'd be nice because then you uh, you probably have the stuff to pressure bottle. Yeah, I think I'm I'm gonna have to sacrifice this bottom bit, and that's all right. That is okay. So I'll just get what I can out of here. There we go. All right. So now, this is like drinkable material right here. This is not a full bottle. Uh, okay, so we have finished off this sweet or semi-sweet mead. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go ahead and bottle or and, and cap the ones I have so far. Now, what I'm doing when I'm capping, I'm using all white caps, but I want to make sure I dif differentiate between the various uh, the various other varieties I have. That's that's a terrible way to say that. Various versions of this mead that I have going on. So um, for the dry one, that's just the way it is. I'm going to put D for dry. For semi sweet, uh, I got to figure out what should I put for that. Probably SS. We'll just do that. It's easy. Uh, and then for sweet, just S. And so I'll know when I pick up a bottle. Oh, this is the sweet one, or this is the whatever. I just drank some blueberry mead that I made. Got the recipe from... <laughs> hey, awesome, John. Hopefully, uh, did you use the same recipe as me? That's crazy. That's awesome. Hope yours turned out pretty good. Mine has actually turned out pretty nice as well. I'm very pleased with it, um, frankly. I will, uh, I'm glad I made a big batch of it, a four-gallon batch. Okay. I'm going to do two things. One, I need to get all my extra ones over here. But two, I need to, um, I'm going to be corking a couple of them. I, I'm, I am kind of afraid of, uh, of a bottle bomb occurring. I don't know if it's going to happen or not. I don't really know. I'm kind of worried. But we're going to find out real quick um, <laughs> if that happens. I don't think there's going to be much fermentation that happens. I'm kind of looking at them to see if this, I see any bubbles, any waking up, but I don't see any right now. That doesn't mean that ultimately there is not any uh, fermentation that will occur. Um, if there's a little, hopefully it's just a light amount that will ultimately result, result in carbonation, just a hair of carbonation, not like a bottle bomb worth. Um, that's what, that is what scares me. And that's also why I'm doing this multiple test thing. Uh, is because the if they start to explode, I'll know. Oh, I put too much honey and back sweetened too much for this to um, to actually have functioned. Okay, so now it's time to start capping. Let's see. I have three pounds of strawberries and a can of strawberry pres uh, preserve, like the blood orange you used. Should I add the strawberry preserve in the second fermentation or the first? My opinion is that you can get more flavor if you put it into the secondary. When you put it into the secondary, um, the fermentation has slowed down some, so you're not losing as much of the aromatic flavors. And whenever you lose the ar aromatic flavors, that's another part, another profile, quote, of the uh, fruit that you want to... You want to taste when you get there. Like an apple, if you taste an apple, of course you know the taste of it, but the smell of an apple or the smell of an orange or those things uh, also play a huge role. As many of you know, taste and uh, smell are kind of go hand in hand. So I would put it in the secondary. However, all that to say, um, some people have had, lots of people have had good luck making it, putting it into the pr uh, primary as well. So. If you have the ability to, I would absolutely try to um, do a test. And then you can know for a better recipe for next time and see which is better in your opinion. That's what I would do. I'm all about testing and seeing uh, ultimately what kind of, um, what, the, what the end result is when I do various things. So you can do that. Let's see. 
Yeah, James T. I I have yet to have one do it. Knock on wood. Um, trying to avoid that in life, but there's a there's no guarantee. That's for sure. Almost done with these. All right, now we're down whoop, to the end of the capped portion. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cork these two. And I have my floor corker over here, as you guys can kind of see. So I just need two corks. A little bit of water. Put one in here. The other, this floor corker is incredible. Even though I don't do a million bottles in the world, it has definitely make, made life easier for doing even just a few. Okay, so to keep these from, um, from getting separated, I'm actually going to go grab something real fast. Let me answer a question, though. Would you ever consider doing holiday meads, for example, pumpkin spice? I've done that one, actually. Haven't done a maple one yet. Candy cane, I've done. Uh, gingerbread, I haven't done. Candy cane is super good. The pumpkin mead, I would do again, and I would back sweeten, and then I would leave the pumpkin in longer, and do something to give it a better flavor. Some research told me soaking Corona bottles in star sand for two days will remove the paint, so I'm soaking now. I'll let you know if it works. Please do, because I have a couple bottles I want to try and use. Um, and we'll see. Let me grab something real fast. All right, so I've got a couple of these. I'm going to use, I've actually color coded with these before for my other meads. Um, so my red has generally meant a mellow mel um, or a, uh, a, a light fruit mellow mel. In this case, it's going to mean just the um, semi sweet. So I'm going to put these to the side. And then I need to put SS on the top of these. Um, and see if that will hopefully keep him from getting confused. If you don't uh, slam the cork hard, it should pop up open before the glass explosion. Yes. So the uh, the only thing about that is uh, I don't always, I mean, I put my bottles kind of away and store them into to spots to where they're, I mean, they're accessible, but I kind of have to like go through and look at them. And so I do go through and look at them every once in a while, but I try to store them in a dark place so that ultimately I'm not affecting the flavor. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. Flavor and everything with light, light and like wine and meads don't always mix well together. So we kind of have to uh, keep that in mind as we're going along and keep that from being an issue. All right, that is all the semi-sweet, which is nice. So we can go ahead and put these over here for now. That's a few done. Ultimately, my plan is to sort out a nice... Um, labeling system. I have some like cheap labels that I've used previously, but I want to go, I'd love to get a nicer labeling system figured out. However, it's money and time and um, I'm not an artist, so I wish I was, but I, uh, I'm pretty far from that in life. I actually had a good friend help me with these shirts and the various other designs. Um, for the pumpkin spice and candy cane mead, would you say that you might do a step-by-step? -step? I actually, if you'll go look at the, oh gosh, October monthly mead um, from 2017, that is the, that's the step-by-step -step that I did to put it in there. And there's like two or three part, uh, parts of it. And that will show you, that walks you through all of that mead that I made. Uh, that was a monthly mead. Hey, Chris, good to see you, man. 
Glad you could join us. All right, we are on to the next one. This one, we're going to go ahead and make this one easy. I want to go ahead and bottle the, uh, what I'm going to call just the dry one. It's not really dry. I'm just not back sweetening it. So it, it will, it'll come out dry compared to the other ones. And we're not going to do a wine bottle of this one. We're just going to do all beer bottles and, um, and these other things. All right. Get our auto siphon and such. Oh, about to get stuff all over my floor. There. First one's always the most fun because you have to awkwardly do stuff. Paul uh, Atridis, I probably messed up your name, I'm sorry. Um, love your videos. What is your intro music from? So my intro music, one thing I haven't talked about it much with uh, my channel is that I'm actually a musician on the side. Um, that's one of my things I do in life. And so I wrote and played all the stuff on the intro music. And that was, um, that was one of the things. I wanted to avoid copyright stuff because that's just not fun and it's really easy to get in trouble nowadays. So I wrote that and put it together and then it avoided that stuff. Is it possible to over sanitize everything before making mead? Um, no, not really. I mean, that's kind of like saying, can I ever get, can I ever take a shower? I mean, you can take a shower too many times, but can you ever clean your skin too much? Uh, probably not. Can you ever uh, over sanitize a mead? I don't think so. I think you'd, you'd have to like bleach it in order to really like harm it. You know what I mean? But just generally like, okay, well, I'm using star sand a bunch. It's not a big problem. I have a question. I'm making a dry mead. What should I do to prevent the bottles from exploding? Do I need to refrigerate the mead? You probably don't need to worry about a dry mead exploding. Um, generally, that means that your fermentation has ran its course. Uh, so there's the yeast are probably dead. I would not worry about a bottle bomb or anything exploding. Um, that commonly occurs with stuff where you're back sweetening or adding extra sugar or just anything where you're closing off a, a surface um, and then the active fermentation. You're probably fine, I would say. Definitely be careful, but you're probably fine. Um, are you a dry mead person? Is that your thing? Let's see. Uh, let's see. Chris, one gallon dry mead. What's your recommendation ratio for adding more honey? So what I did just now in order to figure out how much to back sweeten on these is I took a little measurement thing, um, a tablespoon basically um, and added a tablespoon of honey to my mead and was like okay is that enough and so I basically added until um, I felt like it was good enough so I took and poured into a bottle and then poured that bottle into another a, uh, a glass so I knew exactly how much one bottle would be at which point I did that I added the teaspoon or ta excuse me tablespoon of honey to it and sorted out that that's the ratio, that's how much honey I need. Then I took and took a conversion from how many uh, beer bottles are in one gallon of uh, liquid and I came up with about 11. So I took my one uh, tablespoon and multiplied it. I said by 12, I just kind of rounded up. Um, and so I, I did the 12 tablespoons of honey turns into 0.75 cups uh, per uh, gallon. And so I had two gallons. So lots of different things. Okay, sorry, missed a lot. Would you consider him one? Yes, I would absolutely do that. One micron uh, pump filter. However, it's just money and, you know, I, I don't have a lot of it right now, unfortunately. Um, you have to kill the yeast early. Yeah. So I think you're getting it backwards. I think you're getting your 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 uh, dry mead and sweet mead backwards. Ultimately, you kill the fermentation when you want to keep a sweet mead. You want your yeast to dry out. I mean, if you're wanting a dry mead, you want that the yeast to get all the way through the sugar so there's no residual sweetness. Otherwise, you run into issues. 
Uh, about to start my first batch of Hydromel. Awesome, Nathan. I'm excited. That's great. Emergency question, Dylan. I'll get to you in one moment. Um, so you're adding each... No, I did not add to each individual bottle. I took earlier and put in my cup and a half of honey into my two gallons that was right here and then uh, bottled it. So, I mean, unless my ratios are off, then yes, it might taste different, but I believe my ratios were correct, which hopefully will not be a problem. Okay, curious question. When we siphoned the primary to the secondary, it had a really strong alcohol smell. What do you think that, uh, it's probably a very strong mead, um, depending on uh, if how dry it is. I don't know how much honey you put in. If you put in a lot of honey and a little yeast, you could have like a 15 to 18% mead. And that's very strong, which is definitely gonna put off an alcohol smell, um, especially because there's not a lot of sweetness to it. Currently have a musk going on on the stove. I simmer honey half the water, cool it down with the other half the carboy. Batch number eight for me. Hey, just Chris. Good to see you, man. Uh, that's awesome. I'm glad you're making making some more. Okay, now we're in the fun part. This is where it gets dangerous. Oh. I don't want to lose this bottom half, but I might run to it. I made a, a mango habanero mead and all handled habanero with bare hands. It still feels like they're on fire. You know how to cure habanero pepper hands. <laughs> Dylan, I, uh, unfortunately, my expertise of uh, medical things in life is probably not suited to give you advice for that. So I would say if it's that big of a deal, you might need to, you might need to go to the uh, hospital and talk to somebody. Okay. Please. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. No, no, no. Um, rib hand. We put a three quarter gallon of orange blossom honey. So, wow. So you, how many, how many gallons of water was that? Did you put in there? That's a lot of honey. Um, uh, that is, that just seems like a lot of honey to me, but I think ultimately, yeah, I think you'll be fine. I'm going to mix, do one thing. I'm going to put, this is my semi-sweet. I'm actually going to take the rest of this residual dry and put it in here and, and see what that's kind of like, if I can. Come on. This is like challenging, man. Maybe. If anybody has a better recommendation for how to do this, uh, by all means, give me um, give me some uh, some advice because. I don't want to lose this last little bit, but, oh man, now I'm using my brain. There we go. And I'm also pumping this full of air, which is not what I want to do. All right. This is uh, ill-advisable, but I'm going to actually take and, no, no, darn it, darn it. What a goof. We lost two brave men today. Lots of rips in the, in the uh, chat, please, because this is, this is a sad day. We lost... I mean, we didn't lose as much as I thought. That's not too bad. Definitely was not a good idea. All right. So learn from my mistakes. Don't be dumb like uh, like me. That was very dumb. This is all over the table. I only lost about a quarter of a, of a bottle for each one, so that'll do. Okay, I'll clean that up a little bit. That's why I have a whole towel over here. 
<laughs> you have somewhere to pour your partial bottle. Yeah, I got I got multiple partial bottles now, so I'm actually gonna. I got a bottle here. I guess I can like kind of remedy this. We're gonna find out real fast. This is not the best way to do it. Just FYI, I know I'm breaking some some rules in life, but I don't. It's hard to siphon out of a bottle into another bottle. So I'll use this bottle as my my filler for the rest of them. And then I still have a about a quarter bottle left here. Okay, after that fun time, we're going to now do the same thing we did before, which is um, go ahead and uh, cap these or cork them when I need to cork them too. And then we're going to put, because this is the dry meat, I'm going to take and put um, D on top of all of them signifying dry. Let's see. You're going to throw out your back. Yes, I probably will. I'm already kind of feeling it. I'm not that old in life, but this definitely is not, not making me feel great. Do that and use distilling yeast. I don't know what you guys are talking about at this point, but... Oh my goodness. It's like I'm drunk. No, I'm not. I've got three, one gallon of water. Hold on. Are you talking? Yeah, uh, Mitchell, did you put three, like, and a quarter pounds of honey in? All right, froze. Can you guys see me? Hopefully I didn't freeze for good. I'm a little worried now. Hello? Can... No, froze. Okay, hold on. Maybe I can fix this. Give me a moment. Oh, we're back. Good. Are we back now? Sweet. Okay. Adding, oh, goodness gracious. This is, this is struggling a little bit right now. This is, uh, hopefully audio-wise, better than the previous stream that I did. What is going on here? Maybe. Oh, I'm... Oh, gosh. I think the whole spilling thing threw me off. I'm definitely not going to... I could cap this, but I'm not going to cap it. It's not as easy as I wanted. I'm going to cork it. Thrown off. Oh, no! Uh, oh. So rough. Last time I, uh, I did my bottling... I bottled like 20 gallons of mead and didn't spill this much mead, but I did this time. So rough. Impressively though, I only lost a little bit. I don't know how I'm only losing just a little bit. And you know what? This is what this is what the extra. Uh, Extra one is for it's for the for the party foul situation, so we can fix the party foul that I keep doing in life. All right, goal is to not spill any more mead. We're gonna find out if it's possible. No more mead spilling. gonna throw out your back have you tried making sake no I've never tried making sake uh, I I've never even like 
tried to make sake. I don't know what the process is like, so you'd have to, I'd have to look it up and kind of see. But um, I'd love to do beer. I, I'm a big beer drinker, um, as I think a lot of people are in life. But uh, the thing with beer is that you need, I mean, just like mead, you need other equipment. And I, I started to want to make beer before I made mead. And then I looked at it and I went, man, I need like a big stove and I need a bunch of stuff. And ultimately I didn't, uh, I didn't have that stuff. And I was like, this is too expensive. So I started and saw that, oh, mead is like honey and water. And you just put it in the thing and let it sit. And that's kind of what got me going on it was the fact that it was a little cheap, so to speak. Um, cheap to make. Well, cheap to start. Um, but now looking back on it, I definitely bought enough stuff to afford uh, all the brewing stuff for beer, which is, you know, just how it works, I guess. Okay, we're going to cork this guy, and then the dry portion is done. And now my floor is all sticky, because I have been so dumb. <laughs> Do chicks dig mead? You know, what, what's funny to me about that comment is that uh, um, I, you know, being a YouTuber, I can look at things like my analytics and whatnot, and I, <laughs> my audience, you guys, you guys are about 98% male and then 2% female. So I'll let you infer whatever information you want from that, but... Uh, it's just funny to me. Now you know. Now you know where that stands. Holly Tree. We have one female in the audience. You make up the the small percent. D for dry. Which right now my pants are not dry because I'm spilling stuff everywhere. So now I'm at a crossroads. I don't know if I have, I have a whole nother thing of honey, but I want to try and use the same honey I've been back sweetening, sweetening with. So what I'm going to do, I have some hot water here. Hopefully that'll start heating that up. I got to put for my last bit, my last little uh, bottling part, I need to put one whole cup of um, honey in to the, the sweet mead. Since I have a dry, I have a, a semi-sweet, I want to fill out this, this uh, full sweet. Um, take a mead shot for the party foul. There you go. Cheers. Drinking the mead I'm bottling and spilling. Last one here. Now, I don't know. i got to figure out how I want to stir in, into this. This is a little bit more difficult to stir into. So what I might do, hmm, this isn't, I might need to, to clean out this bucket partially and then actually, um, give me one moment. I'm gonna go off camera for a moment. You can still hear me, hopefully. Just gonna spray out this bucket just a little bit. So now uh, I'm gonna take and put this in here because it's really hard to stir my one cup of honey into that, and I don't want to have to take a weird stick and like shimmy around for 20 minutes trying to do it. So we'll just skip that. All right. So would it be sweet meat or dry meat if I put three quarter gallon of honey? Okay, Mitchell, uh, just to get this straight, you put nine pounds of honey into your one gallon of meat. That would be the sweetest meat I've ever heard of in my life, if that's true. You only put generally three pounds of honey into a mead, and that makes a 
uh, a moderate meat. You know, that's not even like a sweet, super, anything crazy. Um, you, you probably have a sweet meat if you have those ratios. My wife prefers a dry mead that she is a vodka drinker, is racist. I let taste test. Yeah, you, you want to create stuff that's like good for other people too. I mean, realistically, you want to make mead that's good for yourself. But the thing with mead that's fun is you get to make something that other people are going to enjoy. And I've enjoyed um, actually being not, not a spokesperson for mead, but for my friends and other people like introducing them to mead. And you kind of take on the responsibility of being like, hey, here's what meat is. You want to try it. And so, you know, you get people giving it a shot and letting them uh, try something new. Quick question. I have a plain meat that's just sitting in the carboy now, clearing up. It's at zero on the hydrometer and no CO2. Should I still keep the airlock? Um, how long has it been going, Dylan? I'm curious to hear that. That's the first step. First question. Answer me that. How's the new house? Do you like it? I love it. I, I mean, I bought this house. And it looks completely different than when I bought it because I've done a lot of remodeling. And so that's why I've been busy. But it looks, it looks good, I think. Since 8-4, you probably definitely want to leave the airlock on. There's going to be some activity. It's going to be a super small amount. Um, but you're still going to have some that you don't want to bottle quite yet. And if you cork it and like go ahead and cap it off, then you're just going to have a blow up on you, and blow the cork off, and that's not fun. My dad's a whiskey drinker, and he likes it, which says something. <laughs> Almost. And notice that with transferring this over, um, I'm trying not to put too much oxygen back into it, because you don't want to oxygenate your mead. That's when it goes bad, and not, hopefully some of these bottles are going to last me a long time. Um, and I won't actually have to, uh, you know, to, to get rid of any because I haven't drank them in time. All right, so now we're going to add our honey into this portion. Putting one cup, one whole cup of honey in. Using the same honey as before, if I run out right now, my what I'm probably going to have to do is... Uh, use this other honey I bought, which is fine. Um, you know, I I don't know. I, I don't think it's bad to mix honeys in this case. I'm just back sweetening. So I think I might, oh, I'm going to be just short. That's frustrating. To go get another airlock. Yes. Amazon. That's your friend right there. Amazon Prime. If you can do that with your life, Amazon makes makes life so much easier. Okay, well, I got three quarters of a cup. I'm going to have to use my other honey, which, like I said, I'm going to mix some. Not a huge deal in life. There we go. Let's add about a quarter of a cup. Good. All right. If I were to stop the fermentation, how long would I, should I wait? Um, if you stop your fermentation, the best thing you can do is let it sit and make sure that the yeast really stop. You know, if you just like throw Camden tablets in and potassium sorbate um, and all those things to kill it, basically what you're going to do is, is um, you're going to start the process. It does take time for those, those yeast to kind of realize what's going down. Um, so... I would just I would just wait maybe a week or two, and then you could bottle if you wanted to. But I wouldn't immediately go through because you're not exactly like it's not like a uh, potassium sorbate and Camden tablets are not like a um, what's it called? Oh goodness, I'm blanking on it now. Just like a poison pill that you just like eat and it's done. Like it takes time, and ultimately um, they they're going to survive for a little bit. But giving them the time to slowly die out will help that out too. All right. Now we stir. Um, got some money left over each month. Hey, Dylan, that'd be awesome, man. I, uh, you know, I, I appreciate any help I can get. 
which uh, reminds me, like I said earlier, this the store down uh, down below in the section, excuse me, in the description, where if you want to buy anything, I got lots of cool stuff. I've got actually over here. Um, I have a bunch of stickers, which I can't really show right now, but a bunch of various sticker things, which those are, I mean, it's not like you're life, life changing or anything. T-shirts and um, just various other things that are kind of cool. You can check those out. There's also Patreon uh, if you want to help support me that way. And a PayPal donation link, so that also helps. Anything you can do to help me, that is great because honey is getting expensive, especially as I want to make more mead and for uh, content purposes. And right now I'm streaming off of my iPad with a $12 lapel or lavalier microphone. So my setup is not killer by any means, anything like that. Helps me out big time. Uh, local store, grocery store has Russian honey. Huh. I kind of want to try that. That sounds good. I got a P.O. box. Yes, my P.O. box is down in the description. If you want to send me honey or uh, yeast or letters or anything like that, uh, I appreciate all of that stuff. When are you doing the tasting video for, for the mead that guy already sent in? Um... Uh, I'm still trying to figure that out. I don't know quite yet. I've also thought about doing beekeeping. I want to do beekeeping. I live in a city, though. Like, my neighbors would probably murder me if I went to the beekeeping world. I guess we'll find out if I ever do go that route. But right now, probably not going to go that way. Okay. We are on the last section. This is the sweet portion. One cup of honey, one gallon of... Um, Water, excuse me, mead. And this time, this time we're not going to spill any mead. That's the goal. Hopefully, at least. Uh, hey, dude, just recently found your channel and subscribed. Thank you so much. That's so nice of you. I'm glad I could be um, giving some entertainment, hopefully helping you guys uh, making mistakes like spilling mead and doing it so you don't have to because uh it's kind of dumb when you when you make silly mistakes you can watch someone else do it and get it out of the way okay put my bottling wand back on and oh my goodness here we go first one's always the weirdest one has there ever been a mead that you wanted to make but never got around to it i have a whole list of meads that you guys have sent me and then ones that um, I have found interesting online, and I absolutely want to make them, but I have not got around to making them. So yes, the answer to your question is I have lots, lots of them to make. Uh, how long should I leave the fruit in secondary fermentation for? My standard, if you can, is 45 days. 45 days will give you the fruit flavor you want out of the mead. Um, and generally, if you have a high enough ABV mead, Funny enough, uh, you won't get moldy mead, but uh, mine was not, kind of fell apart there. Uh, let's see, For, find your local apiary, get involved, hands. Yes, definitely, it's good to get involved with that. Um, and I have a couple around me, which would be cool. Yep, you have got me started making mead, great. How to play in Thank you, John Miller, it's really nice of you. Christopher Little, how long did it take you to get as many subscribers? Um, well, I don't know. I think I've just been very lucky and very blessed, and uh, it's been a year now. I think I started my channel as maybe a week and a half ago, uh, so it's been a year and like a week. So I've just been very lucky. Um, you know, you guys are great, and I, I can't say it's anything I've done. It's all been the support you guys have given me, ultimately, that's helped propel this channel and make it grow, and I've been very pleased with that. Holly, are you a bee person? Are you involved with any of that? It sounds like you, you have some knowledge of this. When I made a dragon fruit melomel, something similar to your mead grew on top of that, but it smelled like wine yeast. Um, so mine did not smell bad, but I did taste it, and it's not this, something's up. So. Unfortunately, I think I've, I've lost that batch. I don't think there's any way to, to bring it back to life. I got to it too late, and so the, ultimately the 
um, the bacteria or whatever has kind of took over more than I can fix. Uh, watch all your videos and take in lots of pointers. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. That's awesome. I'm glad I can. God can help. That's it's very it's weird to me, but the, I, I've been able to help. But at the same time, I'm very glad. I have been very lucky, Connor. Yes, it's it's super crazy to me. I want to bottle and drink my mead three to four months uh, from the day I started primary. I started primary. It, well, hold on, sorry, I'm trying to read this. Oh yes, to answer your question, uh, Matthew, there is a huge, maybe not huge, a at least important difference in letting your uh, mead age. If you don't let your mead age, what you ultimately have is a young mead, and mead and wine are very similar in that a good wine can age for years and years and years, years, excuse me, and a good mead can age for years and years and years. So the younger your mead is, sometimes the flavors don't have as much time to develop, and you don't get the full effect. I mean, I think that's what ultimately we're talking about, is the full effect of, is my mead, the flavor that I want it to be um, in the complexity and whatever else you want, ultimately, uh, it makes a difference with time. So I would say yes, there's a big difference. You might not notice a huge difference, but that's that's all right. Oh, I'm trying to multitask too many things. Let's see. I want a bottle. And, oh wait, read that kiwi strawberry mango are two. Uh, yes, I would love to do. Kiwi, I've never done one before. Mango, I did one, but it was a puree. And I'd love to do, like, fresh mangoes. Uh, fruit flies. No, I have actually never had any problem with fruit flies, which has been knock on wood. I can't do it right now, but hopefully that's something I never have to deal with. But we'll see. I probably will in the future. How much does it cost for you to make mead? Depending on the honey you use, that's the biggest variable. If you buy an expensive honey like uh, Tupelo, which is a great honey, but it is more expensive, you might look at mm, three pounds being somewhere in the 30 to $35 range, something like that, depending on where you buy it from and how much you buy. So uh, that water is really cheap, and then your supplies also get expensive. So uh, I would say it's hard to average out because when you do a variety of meads, you might say for a gallon of of mead, I'll, I'll round it out to $30. I'll say that. $30 for a gallon of mead, assuming you reuse your supplies. You reuse your like containers and whatnot. If not, then you have to buy a bunch of new stuff. You ever looked up New Zealand honey? I've never looked up New Zealand honey. I would love to get, you know, get some honey like that in the future, but uh, that's where if you guys want to send me that, if you live in a crazy part of the country that has that cool kind of honey, by all means, send it my way, and I will absolutely use it in a mead. But for the moment, um, Oklahoma doesn't have a lot of crazy honeys. So we have some cool stuff, but nothing that's like New Zealand-like honey. All right, here are all the, um, excuse me, sweet. Now I'm actually going to top off this sweet one with, this is dry, so we're mixing batches, but I think I might have just enough to fill it out. That'll do. All right, last portion. All my dries, we're not going to spill any mead goals, not to spill any mead at all, hopefully. And then we ultimately have to cork those and write um, just S for sweet on these right here. Oh, goodness, I'm throwing things. All right, here we go. No problems, please. Save the bees, save the mead. If anybody ever has any ideas for um, shirts, if you want to design something for me, like a shirt or a logo or a, um, if you are an artist and you're like, man, I can draw you a really cool label, send it my way. I would love to try and uh, 
see if I can incorporate it somehow. Because like I said earlier, I am not an artist and I will never claim to be one. So I will um, I'll use whatever help I can get. Almost spill on this one, luckily not. Um, so help me out if you want to. Last two, got to cork those and we're done. Can you recommend some interesting uh, interesting book on mead making, history of mead? I top of my head, no, I don't have a I don't have a book for you. I'm sorry, I, I should. Fellow Oki, that's been making mead for a year. How long have you been making mead? One year, Josh, actually. Um, yes, Canadian Sasquatch has a book out. It's called Mead Methodologies or something. He just changed it, um, which I think he ran into some legal problems or something. But anyways, he has a book. Very good. I would I would check his channel out, check his book out, because he knows a lot of stuff, and he's been he's very knowledgeable of, of mead making, and he's been doing it for longer than me too. So every time he posts a video, I always learn from him as well. Last one. All right. Now we write on the top of these, and then I'm actually going to take him. Make sure I don't get my wine bottle portions mixed up. I'm not going to spill anything. This is the sweet. I saw a question. Uh, what, which is easier to use, caps or corks? Caps, well, the corks are easy with the hand or the floor corker. But if you don't have a floor corker, caps are definitely easier. This thing is about 10 or 15 bucks. And caps are real cheap. I think I got 130 or 140 for like six bucks. Corks get a little more expensive. Um, also, when you use beer bottles, they're a little cheaper than using big wine bottles like these. They get a little more expensive. And you can't carbon, like there can be no carbonation in those because they could explode. These are made, these bottles are made to explode or to handle pressure to where if something did happen, where there was carbonation, they're not going to explode. That's why beer bottles don't ever explode. All right, now putting these on, I'll put them, actually seal them on later. And we are done. We have finished bottling all of the blueberry and vanilla mead. Um, and I still have a few bottles left, which is great. I'm glad that I have some left. I anticipated using more, but between a couple of my wine bottle portions that I've used. Um, ultimately, I, you know, I probably did use close to the amount of bottles that I bought. But it's always good to have more. And a reminder, so these are a little different. I have labeled these. This is uh, sweet, like my real sweet. This is semi-sweet with the reds and then the maroons. And then this is my one dry that I kept. Um, still have a bottle there. Still a little honey left, all this stuff. But, let's see. Uh, I'll answer some questions now. So, let me set, set up somehow. Oh, I'll just sit like this, nice and, nice and comfy. Okay. Um, John Keegan, selling honey locally. Send me some honey, man, I need some honey. I, That'd be awesome. I'd love some. All I have is swing tops. Have you ever... In... Oh, no. That's what I forgot to do. I meant to do a swing top version of one of these, but I forgot to pull it out. Darn it. Um, swing tops are great. I highly encourage using them. They work well. Have you ever wax sealed any of your meads? I have never done that. Um, I it just It's an extra step that I haven't taken. I've always used these. And they're cheap. They're like five cents a little... A little thing and then you just water, dip water into it or over it, whatever, and it seals. So it's real easy. Um, Austin area, swing tops. I like the shirt as is. It's pretty, it's basic, it's simple, but it, it works well. I like it too. So, um, yeah. So one thing with all of these, the goal, um, is to ultimately, I want to make more, uh, I'm finding all of my ingredients and all of my uh, recipes that I like. And so as I make mead, like I said, I'm, I'm 
finding that, and maybe some of you guys have, guys have found this as well, that you turn into some sort of ambassador for Mead. And in that case, um, that's a great opportunity for you to talk to your friends and be like, hey man, try this Mead, because realistically, not many people do try it. Not many liquor stores carry it. So you run into the issue of, well, you know, like people, I don't know what Mead is, and so I don't really know if I want to try it. Well, you can push people to try it and see it. But I've enjoyed that too. Here's an idea I'm going to do later down the line. Uh, how about stoneware jugs and bottles? I have never dealt with those before. I've never even thought about that. Um, I mean, if it works for you, I think that you'd have some problems. I don't know exactly what problems, but some for sure. But I don't know. Uh, let's see. So this went by faster than I thought. I thought it was going to take me an hour and a half-ish to do this. So I'll be on here for a few more minutes, and then I'm got to get off and uh, clean up all of my uh, containers because I still have a lot of them left. Please try rum yeast. It's supposed to be able to handle molasses, which um, actually there's a bunch of yeast I want to try. If you guys are familiar with my content, you've probably seen my big video that has happened. I've been lucky with that about the mis mead mistakes I might be making. Um, so I talked about yeast in that one and the, the Lauven products. I want to try the White Labs yeast. If you guys have no idea, I've never heard of White Labs, let me put it in the chat real fast. White Labs is a really great company um, who, they, they just have a ton of different styles of yeast. There's one called the Hothead that I have, um, I've heard about about that uh, ferments really fast, but it's really good. Like it ferments fast and at a higher temperature. So uh, if you, when you are fermenting, you need to ferment things within the temperature range that the yeast likes to live. And with that one, you can ferment in like the 85 to 90s range, which is crazy. Um, so I've missed a couple things. Pumpkin spice mead. Thought about using pumpkin spice black tea. Ooh. That could be pretty good. I, that's interesting. I would definitely, I would try it and see how it goes. That could be really good. Do you prefer back sweetening or adding more sugars in the primary? Uh, if you, depending on how much your yeast can handle, um, you might have to add wood, like, like a ton of uh, honey in order to make a sweet mead. Like if your yeast can handle 14%, you've got to put like 18% worth of honey and get your gravity real high in order for the um, it to be sweet, and then at a certain point, the yeast can kind of survive when they get past that 14%, but most of the time they struggle, and it can actually cause strain and bad flavors to your, your mead whenever they're struggling that hard and trying to metabolize all of the sugars. So I'd be careful about doing that. I prefer to back sweeten because then you avoid the bad flavors. Holly, good night. Thanks for watching. I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Uh, what's been your favorite recipe so far? I've always said this because I loved it. My peppermint mead, which was 52 candy canes, three pounds of Desert Creek honey, and then a gallon of water, and put all that together, and it was fantastic. I would highly encourage it. Um, where did man-made mead come from? Uh, I was just trying to, when I started the channel, I wanted to create something unique, and so I thought of the name man-made mead. I don't know. I can't, there was no, uh, I think I think it just came to me in the night, something like that. It just kind of happened. I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. Oak aged, oak chips are awesome in mead. Where do I find your PO box info? Uh, go down into my description and you will find all of the links you ever need in life. PO box 21791, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, 73. 156. That is the P.O. box if you want to send me anything. I would highly suggest banana blueberry. Hmm, that's interesting. Mine just finished. It's the best I've ever had. Yes, Christopher, if you want to send me it, absolutely. That would be great. I would love to try something like that. Um, <laughs> miss your concerts. When's the next mixtape dropping? So I've been using uh, jars being more open. Why well, get more mead versus usual jug type? Hold on, see. 
Uh, I don't see. I don't know if if jugs in fermentation. I know they have a different effect. Ultimately, like you're letting air in, access more parts of the mead when you have a wider container, which can affect the flavors. So there is that problem. Like in, oh, I don't have a great example in this container right here. If when you're fermenting, which I still have a little mead in it, um, there's not a lot of area for the oxygen to sit, which is kind of nice because then you're not worried about oxygenating your mead, especially when it gets past the primary and secondary fermentation and you're wanting to age it. You want to avoid that as much as possible. So uh, just be careful with letting it set for a long time. Maybe during fermentation you can be fine, but I wouldn't do it for aging purposes. Do you have any favorite commercial meads, preferable ones I could get online? Um, I've only accessed the one, uh, ones I have around here, I've only done, let's see, I've done two mead reviews, and uh, one was, and now I'm blanking, oh goodness, Moonlight Meadery Red Dress, which is that uh, one that's not out yet, you guys will see that very soon. And then the first one was Redstone Meadery Honey Wine with Juniper Berries, and that one was also really good. Redstone is a Colorado brand, and they're very good. I would definitely suggest them. I don't know if you can get online though. That might be a problem. <laughs> Last question. What makes you rage? Um, definitely spilling mead that I've let age for a long time. You know, that's not a fun thing. It makes me a little mad in life, but you know, you do what you can ultimately. So I, uh, I would not, <laughs> I don't know. There's aside from that, there's not a lot. Uh, let's see. Do you think swing top bottles are a good short-term choice for mead bottling? Short-term in that you can do them for like uh, six months to probably two years uh, if, you're, if you don't open it ever. Then you're probably fine. But if you, if you want to age like five years, you're probably going to run into some problems. Originally figured wide mouth would make secondary easier with adding and cleaning. Uh, I don't know if that's a bad idea by any means because it does make it easier um in secondary you you don't really need you want to be able to like get your fruits and stuff out easily and so what a lot of people try to do is if you try to put like a ton of strawberries and a ton of apples and stuff and in, into a jar uh, container like this then what you run into when you're trying to empty it all out is like pulling stuff out and you're just getting more sediment into the mead as you rack it over. So ultimately when you can put it into a big container and then like say you've got apples, you can put them into a bag, put the apples in the bag and put them in there and soak it like a tea bag. Ultimately that's going to be easier to pull out and you're going to get less sediment. That's what I did with this mead actually was a bunch of blueberries, smashed them up and did a bunch of stuff and put them in into a bag and the sediment was far less considerable. I only racked that one twice. And then there's not a lot of sediment, which is nice. Uh, how much honey are you needing? I'm interested in, in how my honey does. You mean, how much honey do you need for just a general mead? Because that does, I mean, it just depends on what you're trying to do, honey-wise. If you're doing a, a mead that's, small, uh, excuse me, what I'm thinking of. Lighter ABV, so like a hydromel that's like 7%, that's less honey. How much mead do you think you have in your home at any point, including stuff that's actively fermenting? I think the other day I thought about it, and right now I have about 20 uh, bottled and active. Um, I got about 25, 26 gallons going. So I've got a, um, I got a couple, a couple things going. Good rage man, minus people who don't use indicator lights. Yes, absolutely. Always get dry. Maybe you need to add more uh, sugar in the initial parts, Chris, um, or use a different yeast. I don't know what yeast you're using, but that might affect it as well. Would you consider competitions? Yes, absolutely. Um, I'm trying to get my recipes down so that whenever I send them to competitions, I've got my best. So I've got a couple that I like that are good, um, but I don't feel like I'm ready for the competition stuff. Those guys are crazy, good, crazy, you know, crazy in general, but crazy good. And they've got stuff that they've aged for five years and, you know, they send off to competition. Um, so that's hard to compete with. I'll get there eventually. Uh, when I make a mead, John, to answer your question, basically I'm just doing three gallons, excuse me, three pounds of honey generally per, per uh, mead. That's my typical. And then I'll put stuff on top when back sweetening and whatnot. 
Oh, I, yeah, I'm answering too many people. 50 cents. I use three pounds per, per one gallon of mead. So, uh, this one right here, like I want to make bigger batches. Um, I'm all about making small batches and trying things, but I've got a couple recipes that I want to make big batches of. So if you want to send me at least three pounds, man, that's killer. Or even one pound. I don't care what you send me. Anything you send is great. I would so appreciate it. Uh, you can put too much fruit in mead. Can you put too much fruit in mead? Mm, I mean, if your ratio of fruit to, to mead is like 50 to 1, probably, because um, you're just going to get a bunch of sediment that you ultimately have to throw out. But I would say it's hard to do that. You also are going to buy a ton of fruit if you're doing that. So if your fruit costs a considerable amount more than your honey, then something's up. I would watch out for that. What are your favorite recipes that you make? Um, the peppermint mead was really good. This blueberry mead, this is a the second round that I've done it. I made it the first time uh, about a year ago. And then I liked it, so I did the second round and added vanilla. Um, I've also tried, I liked my mango mead. If I had back sweetened it, it would have been a little better. Let me think of my other ones. Uh, my others, interestingly enough, the lemon and lime mead is very good. It has tamed down, and that answers the question someone asked earlier, which is your, your mead will get better with age. Um, so I would not, I would not worry about, uh, I just let it age because like the lemon and lime mead got way better just by me letting it set for a long time. Gonna bounce. I'll be sure Patreon support. Keep it up. Hey, thanks, Dylan. Thanks for watching. Um, I will see you in the next one. Let's see. Do you keep the pitch 109 for the whole 30 minutes? Yes, Blue Onion. I do. Um, I try to... Oh, and uh, sorry, John. Yes, Boche. That's another one I like. Um, yes, I try to keep it at 109 the whole time. If I keep it at 109, then ultimately what I'm doing is is letting that yeast rehydrate in the way that it needs. So it's a little bit tedious. You got to watch it, but you're you're helping the yeast survive. So don't go. I actually sit a little lower. I sit try to sit at about 106 to 107 because 109 can be that kind of breaking point of like, will the yeast survive or die? I don't know. Kind of in between. Michael Brewing TV has a few videos for his mead being a fruit wine instead of mead. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, this is the world we live in. Meads and wines are so close. The biggest difference is your, your base is um, honey, you know. So, yeah, a lot of times people, people call these things. Uh, like dessert wines, like, oh, what was I thinking of the other day? Something, I watched a video and somebody was like, his, everything he put into his mead, made it a mead, except for in the, like, description of the FDA and all these things, basically he, used, he made a dessert wine, by their definition. So, it's kind of silly. Um, yeah, I would, it's, it's just silly to me that, that when people fight over the stuff all the time, However, it's not, not the biggest deal at all. All right, I got time for like a couple more questions and then I've got to actually take and clean up and sanitize and take care of all this stuff so I can put it away. So ask me your last questions and then I gotta go, unfortunately. Ever tasted a good ice wine? Can't say I have, that's definitely new for me, but I would uh, be curious to try it. You know, I'm down for trying anything, any kind of mead. Speaking of which, any more questions? Generally, most people have a very warped view of mead. Most imagine it being very sweet. Yeah, um, if you've ever had the mead, I actually did, I haven't done a mead review over it, but it's one called Chaucer's. It is intro mead for people trying mead. It's very sweet. It's just like a super sweet, non-carbonated cider. And it's just not, it's bad, in my opinion, a bad definition of what mead is. It's just, it's too much. Basically, they freeze the grapes to increase the sugar content. Hmm. 
I see, I don't know about that. There's a lot of stuff I don't know with mead making, and I don't ever want to claim to know everything, so uh, don't ever seem that I'm, I know everything. In fact, I do a lot of research before I try to make videos and try to go through my own experiences, and most of the time, um, I know that sometimes I get a lot of flack for people saying, like, you don't know what you're talking about, and stuff like that. In the world we live in, with, with all these different brewing techniques, is everybody has a different brewing technique, and... Um, I hate to be totalitarian, and I don't want to be totalitarian with my concepts. So um, when I make suggestions, it's my own suggestion. It's not the end-all, be-all. Because I might say something, and then Canadian Sasquatch might say something, and then Groenfeld Meadery might say something. We might have conflicting viewpoints. Ultimately, if we get to the same end result, then that's great, you know, that we want to do that. But... Um, Different things, different variables will yield different results. So I wouldn't be afraid to try things, especially try different methods. That's why I'm trying the different methods with those. Um, I think that it doesn't increase the sugar content necessarily, but it, it brings out the flavors and the sugars in the actual grapes in a certain way. When you freeze fruit, it uh, on a molecular level, we get all scientific all of a sudden. It takes an... Uh, freezes a lot of the compounds within, and then it actually takes and releases the fruit flavor in a different way. So the cell walls, just like TLC said, breaks down. Yes, exactly. You guys, see, you guys are way smarter than me. I'm just repeating what you say at this point, essentially. Have you made a mead like, hold on, have you made a mead like drink? Mm -hmm. Maple syrup meads uh, are called, uh, what are they called? Oh, goodness. That's got a, a weird name. Anyways, yes, that is a type of mead. It's a specific mead name. Uh, and it is, it's good. I um, I want to make one. I haven't made one yet. Like I said, I got a list of meads to make, and I have yet to make him, uh, some of them. So I'm getting there. All right, got time for one more question, and then I have got to, to take care of my stuff, clean up my kitchen, make it look normal. One more. Who's the lucky person for the last question? Thanks for watching, TLC. Ars yes, Arsa Glenn. That's it. Arsa Glenn. All these have different names, crazy names. Um, but it is a mead based around maple syrup. All right. One more question. Come on. Who's got it for me? If not, this will be a sad ending. Have you made any meads using peppers? Josh, I'm going to leave that an that question unanswered because that's a perfect segue for something that might happen very soon. So since you've made it to the end of this episode of this video, I'll let you know right now that that is something that happened just a few days ago. So uh, hopefully uh, you guys watch that. Be on the lookout for that video. Okay, hey, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, all these links down below if you want to check them out and support me. I appreciate all of your your um, your help and just watching. Man, it's so cool to get to talk to you guys. I love making these videos and, and getting to do live streams. It's so fun. So uh, I will hopefully be doing more of these soon. Be on the lookout for the September monthly meet and various other things going on. So feel free to comment and like and give me suggestions. And I always love hearing what you guys have to say because uh, you guys, like I said, are smarter than me most of the time. Um, I'm just, I, I learn things as I go, and I learn from you a lot of the time. So I hope you guys all have a wonderful night, and I know some of it, some of you guys is late, um, but thanks for watching, and I will see you guys around. So, hey, goodbye.